What's going on guys? So today I want to take a look at some mods that are going to take the difficulty in Anno 1800 and crank it up a notch or five really depending on which ones you use. For those of you who feel like Anno even on expert difficulty is a little too easy these mods might add a little more depth to your gameplay and maybe keep you on your toes a little bit trying to manage even more logistics and maybe even more challenging AI. So to get started I have two different options for you. I don't recommend playing with both of these at the same time, but choose whichever one you like the most. So let's get started with the first one, and that is Hackner's Maintained Needs. Hackner has brought us a mod that harkens back to the older Anno titles. Anno 1800 was the first one in the series, other than the Synthetics DLC for Anno 2205, uh, where you did not have to maintain the same needs all the way through your different residential tiers. This screenshot right here shows what we all know to be true in Anno 1800 right now. Farmers need schnapps, work clothes, and fish. Workers need those three things, plus sausages, bread, soap, and beer. But then when you get to artisans, they drop the farmer goods. So it progressively changes as you go. Hackner has gone through and added all of the needs to all of the residential tiers. Now investors need everything from farmers all the way up through engineers. Lifestyle needs have not been touched. This only adjusts luxury and basic needs for your residential tiers. This is going to really increase the logistical challenge of the game having to supply everything. Uh, I, I can't even begin to explain how difficult it's going to be to supply everything. However, Hackner has given us a little bit of a break by adjusting the consumption amounts. So now the consumption rates are consistent across all residential tiers. Workers consume the same amount of fish as farmers, and investors will consume the same amount of fish as farmers. It keeps all of that consumption consistent since you will need so much of it. And just to show you this in the game, the farmers, of course, as always, same needs, same lifestyle needs, same happiness needs, same for the workers. Nothing has changed here. Everything is the same. It's just when we get to artisans, engineers, and investors that we start seeing all of this being carried over now. So now they need the farmer level goods right there. Farmer level goods right there. Engineers need all of this stuff as well, as well as farmer and worker level goods now. The only difference uh, for the lifestyle needs for the engineers is that they need grapes instead of soap now. Since soap is a basic need, he has swapped that over with grapes. And then, of course, investors need all the things. So you're going to have a fun time trying to supply all of that. Now, the second option you have for a mod that will change the needs of different residential tiers is actually a pair of mods. They are both by Carilla. Now the first one is the Revival of Low Tier Goods. It's a bundle of mods that adds new productions and goods for engineers and investors specifically, as well as some additions for artisans. So we have liqueur. So schnapps is added as a new need for artisans. So artisans now need schnapps. Liqueur is added as a new need for engineers and investors. Liqueur is made from schnapps, sugar, and optionally one of the following ingredients, bananas, citrus, cherries, or herbs, depending on DLCs and everything that you may or may not have. There are also sandwiches that can be provided to engineers and investors, and they are made from bread, sausages, and red peppers. If you have Jacob's Cheese Mod, cheese sandwiches are also possible. And then you have smoked fish. Fish is added as a new need for artisans. And then smoked fish is added as a need for engineers and investors. And it is made from wood, fish, cherry wood, or wanza wood, again, depending on DLCs you have. So very simple compared to Hackner's massive overhaul right there that he had, but it does add more goods and new production chains. You can see right here, we have pictures of the new chains right here. Here's the smoked fish factory. We have the sandwich shop. And we have the liqueur factory right here. So these are just reskins of existing buildings, but it does add more productions that you can supply your people with in the game. And it's just more buildings to have. The second part of the bundle right here with Carilla is called Early Game. This expands the gameplay of farmers, workers, and artisans. These add the needs for wood, potatoes, red pepper, and milk to the farmers. 
potatoes, red peppers, cheese, and tools to workers. And for artisans, you'll need fish, schnapps, potatoes, red peppers, cheese, and tools. So checking these out in game right here, with the farmers, we see now the wood, we see the potatoes, and we see those red peppers and the milk. And there's a new tab in the farmer section called basic production, or basic food rather. And this is the, where the fisheries, the potato farm, red pepper farm, and the dairy farm comes from. So there's the dairy farm. It's just a repurposed cattle farm, but you can have that. The workers now have that cheese and the tools available to them, as well as the um, potatoes and red peppers, just like from the farmer face. Nothing else has changed under the happiness or the luxury. And we have that cheese production right here. It's made from the dairy farm, and that goes into a cheese dairy. Now, that's a gorgeous looking building right there. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, there's our little cheese factory. It is a very simple one-to-one -one ratio, by the way. One dairy farm will supply one cheese. And then we have the tools over here. Tools are made from a furnace and a lumberjack's hut going into a tools workshop. One furnace will supply two tools workshops. Now, of course, for the engineers, we do need that smoked fish and the sandwiches. Now, the fish smokery is actually an interesting looking building right here. It looks a little complicated, but all you actually have to place is this final building right here. OK, you place that and this is a multi factory. We go in here and we select the production we want to use and a regular fish smokery using. Let's actually go over here and look at it. So simple woods uh, and fish. So basically just your regular lumberjack huts and fish. This gives you one ton per minute. If you use the cherry wood, which comes from the tourist season or the high life DLC, you combine that with fish, it will give you two tons per minute on the smoked fish. And then if you do the Wanza wood from Land of Lions, you will get three tons per minute on the fish right there. So different outputs and everything. And it shows you right here uh, all that is, you know, shows you how it works. It's always two fish and one wood. And then the different types will give you Different types of wood give you different outputs of smoked fish. So really, really cool mod right there. The sandwich shop is the exact same thing. Place this down and then you choose how you want it to be produced and it will tell you what you can do. You can either get the cheese sandwiches with cheese and everything or just a basic sandwich with red peppers and sausage on it. And it tells you the demand and the supply. I really like that, actually, how Carilla has done that. I really wish the uh, the base game would, would show that. I think that'd be really, really cool, uh, the the total amount of input that you need. So that's kind of nice. And then last but not least, we have the liqueur. Same thing. We go over here. We have cherries, plantains, citrus, and herbs. And it shows you all the different options that you can do. So however you want to make these is up to you. And you can supply your people with some new produce. Now, this next mod is just way too fun, and while it's not as nearly as expansive as the others on this list, it's just way too good not to use. This is Pet Needs for Lifestyles uh, by, and I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this name, but it's a super cool little mod. It's very, very simple. All it does is adds cats and huskies to the lifestyle needs for your people. All the information is right here. Basically, huskies that are produced in the Arctic are needed for pretty much everybody. Everybody needs a husky. Everybody wants a husky. There's also some new items uh, like the Cat Lover Chef who affects the cannery factory and it reduces the speed by 50% and every one of one cycle gives you cat, cat canned food. Or you can get the Cat Lover Doctor who affects the cat shelter factory and you get extra three cats every one cycle. So really, really fun. There's not much to say about this mod other than if you love cats and dogs, get this one. It adds in those le under lifestyle needs. It will give you extra residence and happiness and some coin and everything. And who doesn't like having cats and dogs provided for your people? Next up, we have another mod by Corilla. This is Cattle Needs to be Butchered. This is a, again, a very simple mod, but it does add another layer of complexity to the game that's kind of missing uh, on the in-between from cattle farms to the final product, and that is the butchering process. So this just adds a new butchery building into the game. 
and cattle are now farmed from the cattle farm, and those go to the butcher to be butchered, and the meat then goes to the different buildings that need the meat, such as the cannery. If you're also using Carilla's industrialized low-tier productions, there is a larger butchery building. So this has some overlap and customization along with his other mods and everything. So again, very simple mod, but it does add an extra building to increase those logistics. And it's not just a simple matter of throwing down cattle farms and instantly have meat. Now you need a butcher. Now our final production focused mod is also by Carilla, and this is the Production Works mod. Now this is a pretty extensive mod right here. Instead of trying to show it all in the game, I'm just going to talk about it right here. What this is, it adds lots of changes to productions of factories. This adds a Cable Works factory building. So now telephones require cables instead of filaments. Elevators now require cables in addition to filaments. Cables have been added as a construction cost for all buildings that have electricity as a requirement. Power plants, the radio tower, and other buildings similar to that also cost cables to build. Some monument building sites now require cables instead of in addition to or instead of previous materials, and some of Nate's recipes have had filaments replaced with cables. There's also a drink works. Schnapps and beer now need clay or glass. Glass is only available at artisans, so now you have to use clay, uh, which is built from a clay sink at Farmers, which can be upgraded to a clay pit later. There's also a clay mine available at Engineers. The Drinkworks 2, rum, champagne, and cognac now need barrels for, con for production. There is one cooperage each for the New World and Old World. Barrels are made from timber and steel. Steel must be imported until the furnace of the New World Rising DLC is unlocked. Cherry Timber, which is a new product, and Wanza Timber, which has a new icon, can also be used and they bring a higher output. Sawmills now become recipe buildings, aka multi-factories, and they can now make ch cherry timber from cherry wood. Glass is also now required for the production of cognac and these updated icons and graphics. The jewelry works. Farmers, workers, and artisans now consume wooden jewelry as a luxury good. Wooden jewelry is made from wood. The potato works. Farmers, workers, and artisans now consume potatoes. This is an overlap with his other mod that changes the uh, consumption needs to add potatoes to those three. So this will have, this will basically just kind of overlap with that if you already have it. And potatoes are now needed for goulash. The steel works. Some factories now consume additional steel or steel instead of iron, including the canning factory, the light bulb factory, and the telephone factory. Dario, the mechanical engineer, now lets all steel consuming factories produce one steel every fourth cycle, which is really, really nice. And Mrs. Mason, the legendary specialist, has been redesigned and now exchanges steel for brass at the canneries. The watch works. Pocket watches are now made of brass instead of gold. Pocket watches are available to and consumed by artisans, which I think is a really good change, actually. Pocket watches are a lifestyle need for workers, and the watch workshop items have been adjusted uh, because there were a couple of items already that changed out gold for brass, so he has reworked those items. And last but not least, woodworking. Wood is exchanged for timber in most of the productions. Wood veneer has been renamed to veneered wood. Marketry workshops now process timber in addition to wood, and cherry and wands of wood can be used, and they bring a higher output, so now the marketry workshop is a multi-factory. An invest in sawmill that produces wands of timber has been added, and cherry timber can now be used instead of cherry wood for cognac, billiard tables, and violins. So a lot of changes to a lot of factories to smooth out some of their productions, uh, change their inputs to be a little more... Uh, you know, un make more sense, basically. They just make more sense and increase some of that complexity and logistics challenge that you have to have. All right, let's talk about some AI-oriented stuff, and we're going to start with the biggest one out there, and that is the Combat Overhaul by Asus. Now, this mod probably needs very little introduction because so many people have heard about it and know about the Combat Overhaul. I am not going to go through a detailed, exhaustive, discussion about what all this mod does. It does a lot. What I'm basically going to do is I'm going to go through the technical details real quick and explain what all the different parts of this does because there are five parts to this mod and it is modular. You can play with whichever ones you want. So part one of this mod is the ship mod. 
This changes how ships function in combat, and it adds lots of new ships for the player and the AI. That's all this part does. Part one is your ships. Part two is the AI changes. Part two changes the AI. They build faster, they build more ships, they build more defenses, and the AI will no longer be handicapped. So this is where the true challenging part of the game comes in. Part one does add a lot of ships, but if you're just playing with Benta and Willy, it's still going to be really easy and they will build those ships, but they're still going to be Benta and Willy. They're still going to be pretty easy. But part two, where it changes the AI, it's going to make those AIs way more difficult and way more challenging to play against. Part three of this mod changes the pirates. It makes the pirates a lot more difficult and they will still build ships very, very fast and be a lot more aggressive and harder to keep uh, pacified with diplomacy and everything else like that. So you're really going to have a hard time with the pirates with part three of this mod added in. Now part four of the mod is makes the AI into teams. All AIs are at 100 reputation, have alliances with each other, and will remain so as long as part four is enabled. And you can enable or disable this part. This is basically puts you against the world. It is you against everybody else. In this one, the AIs will not fight with each other. They are only going to be focused on you. That is going to drastically increase that challenge level right there. And finally, part five of the combat overhaul changes how the AI builds their cities. Uh, they do more building styles. They use more parks and natural trees. It's actually a really interesting little side piece I consider to the combat overall. It has nothing to do with combat overall. It has nothing to do with combat at all. It's just changing how the AI builds their cities to have them make them more interesting looking and not so static. I mean, all the AIs kind of have their own building style, but they're kind of silly looking. So Asus has gone through and changed the builds, the build patterns for the AI and everything and done a lot with that to make the AI a little more realistic looking when they are building their cities and attacking you with those giant fleets of ships they're going to be building. And last but not least, we have an alternative to the combat overhaul by CERP called AI Everyone Hard. Now, what this mod does is kind of like part two of the combat overhaul. It changes the AI to where they are all three-star AI now. They're going to have larger, more powerful militaries a lot faster, a lot of defenses. They will use harbor mines, kind of like what Mercier does from the Anarchist DLC. The AI will use every trick in the book to try to take you out with what they have available. Now, the difference between this and the combat overhaul is all this mod is, is AI related. That is all. It just changes your opponents to be all three-star AI and use, I believe he used uh, Margaret Hunt as the basis for how difficult they will be. So it's basically like playing against a bunch of Margaret Hunts in terms of military strength. Now their personalities are the same though. Benta is still the easiest and she's still super friendly and everything else, very easy to get along with, but she is going to have a very large AI. So if you're looking for a military mod that's not as expansive as the combat overhaul, or you want to test the combat overhaul's AI changes versus this one, go give both of those a try and see which one you like the most. They're both going to make your game a lot more challenging, with the AI being more difficult to manage in diplomacy and coming at you with those big fleets of ships. So it should be pretty fun for you people who love war. All right, guys, that is it for me for this list of mods that you might want to check out that will increase the difficulty of your game. Are there any mods that fit this description that I didn't talk about that you are interested in? Let me know down below in the description, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care.